Hey everybody, Noah here. Welcome back to another episode of I am going to show you some evil little goblins that I found and you're gonna hate it, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I need to pay rent. Speaking of rent, landlords, how do they work? What's their deal? What makes them tick? Oh no, okay, well. In a similar way that one might use the phrase all cops are bastards or a cop, the same could be done for landlords because all landlords are also bastards or a lob. Allow me to elaborate on that point. <laughs> When it comes to this idea that both of these roles in society are fulfilled by quote-unquote bastards, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are all bad people. It doesn't mean they're all going to hell. Although, let's be real, many of them are bad people that will be going to hell. What it means is that they willingly contribute to sustaining oppressive systems when they don't have to. In the case of cops, the system of policing, especially in America, is a militarized force that enacts violence against people of color at disproportionate rates, with things like over-policing, racial profiling, and just all the acts of pure evil that go on all the time, I probably don't need to remind you. But most of the time, these are done with impunity. If real systemic change ever happens, it is not going to happen from the inside. Landlords, on the other hand, do their crimes in a slightly different way. Landlords are members of the capital-owning class. They sustain a system that requires housing, a basic human necessity, to be withheld from poor and working-class people in order to turn a profit. This, of course, comes with the same kinds of discrimination practices across racial lines like redlining, for example, but subjugation in all forms is sort of intrinsic to the concept of a privatized housing market. People need a place to live, and if there's money to be made from that need, then well, congratulations, congratulations. You've, you you've just been capitalism. Supple demon. Nice, beautiful red nipples. In 95% of the country, it is not possible for a worker making minimum wage to afford rent on a one-bedroom apartment. The majority of renters in the US spend over a third of their income on rent, and these costs have been rising steadily over time while real wages have remained stagnant. And so, any person consciously choosing to profit off of this system to play a role in upholding this power structure is a bastard. And it's okay to say that. It's good, even. I encourage it. You have my permission. Kids, if you're watching this, the word bastard Bastard has officially been legalized for use by children. It's not a swear word anymore. Go nuts. I think the way that we are conditioned to conceptualize housing, especially in America, makes it difficult to really zero in on how this problem can be solved. After all, most of us are just busy trying to make sure that we have a place to stay, and landlords just so happen to own all of the apartment buildings. None of us can afford a down payment on a house, obviously. I don't know why I would ever utter those two dirty little words, down payment bleh. Nice try. So this is just how things are. Burning half of your paycheck on a studio apartment in the middle of a North Dakota oil field is just God God's gift to you as an American citizen. However, as we'll look at later on, it doesn't have to be this way. Things could be easier, more affordable, better for all of our lives. We could be living in a world where having a place to settle down and raise a family isn't something that you are constantly in fear of the slave, mar the free market taking from you. And you can instead utilize those resources or that free time to focus on doing things that actually bring your life meaning. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Before we get caught up in all that communism stuff, we need to talk about the reason that I've brought you all here today in holy patreon -amony. And that reason is landlord TikTok. I am reluctant to inform you all that yes, landlords are real. Yes, they exist. Should they have rights? Should they have phones to make TikTok content? Definitely not, but unfortunately they do, and they're doing that, so we are going to take a peek at this ripe, hand-picked selection of TikTok landlord content to really get an understanding of how these freaks think, and how they use epic, snarky comedy and content creation techniques that should be punishable by exile into space to justify their existence as a scourge upon the earth. And we're gonna do that. We will. Don't worry. Right after, I take a quick moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Atlas VPN. Companies are good, okay? They're the best. We love companies over here, and there's just no other companies out there that are quite as good as Atlas VPN. If you're unfamiliar, VPNs help keep you safe on the internet by encrypting all of your traffic and giving you privacy from all those peeping toms out there. I'm looking at you, and Atlas VPN can do all of that 
we love it. Atlas has over 6 million users worldwide, and they offer blazing speeds, unlimited device protection, and built-in safety measures like data breach monitoring, which automatically scans leaked databases to let you know if any of your information has been exposed. I am a VPN enjoyer. I like using Atlas to have a look around foreign Netflix catalogs. Check this out, I just scroll and click whichever one I feel like on that particular day. And I click here and boom, connected. It's time to grab my Italian popcorn and settle down on my Italian couch for some Italian films. Right now, if you use the link in my description, you can get a huge discount on Atlas VPN. It's a three year subscription for just $1.39 per month with a 30 day money back guarantee. Holy cannoli, that's cheap. Every day brings us one day closer to death and one day closer to missing out on this great deal from Atlas VP. <laughs> so click the link in the video description below to get that Atlas in your life. Okay, back to the video now, Landlord TikTok, here we go. Our first TikTok Landlord Freak of the Day is this guy, Chandler David Smith, a self-described real estate investor, YouTuber, and regional sales manager with 110,000 TikTok followers. His content aims to elevate your business grind set. He gives advice to help you get all your investments, stocks, and and bonds and portfolios in ship shape. I would still increase rents every single year if I could get away with it. Damn, son. A true man of the people. He also does this one little thing that's actually quite interesting and fun. Eviction content. Yep. Eviction content. I'm gonna say it twice for effect. One of the most popular videos on his TikTok account with almost 3 million views is a video of him kicking a family out of their home and exploiting this process to go epic style viral on TikTok. Awesome. Thanks Chan. Chan man. Jackie Chan. Jack off Chan. He posted this encounter through an 11 part video series last week titled Worst Eviction Ever. And in these videos, which he claims are meant to be educational for the budding capital owner, the up and coming slum lord, he paints a picture of the arduous process that was having to evict evict these tenants from hell. After starting off with some clips of his confrontation with a visibly agitated fellow, captioned, when the tenant I'm evicting tries to make me feel dumb. Four million plus views, wow. wow. He shows us the damage that these tenants have supposedly done to the property. He asks them for an interview to quote unquote, get their perspective. The text that overlays this part says, after months of not paying rent, the tenants were trying everything to stay in my property. In the first video of the interview, the text on screen screen reads, they broke several windows and complained about the slow maintenance. But if you actually listen to the woman who's speaking here, she describes how a window in the house was broken when they moved in, and despite requesting repairs and waiting for over a year for someone to show up, the window was never properly fixed. So the window was broken from day one? Yeah, um, the living window over here. You know, after a while, he's like, oh, it should be here in like nine weeks. But after a while, he's like, oh, um, it should be here next month. It's on order, blah, blah, blah. And then he just kept giving us excuses. And just like a couple months ago, he had somebody come in and put um, a temporary window in and then he said he's gonna have to order the uh, window so it's gonna be here in about 9 12 weeks and I said really that was supposed to be ordered like a year ago you know what I mean and this ended up causing $1,300 in property damage when a hailstorm hit especially if it was problems and issues in the beginning that was not solved we never said anything about the hailstorm about the window that and wasn't the there that the damaged over $1,300 of our yeah why because the window wasn't fixed. She talks about how the kitchen plumbing was broken and they didn't have running water on Thanksgiving and she had to run back and forth between the kitchen and the bathtub to do the dishes. Every time I asked him to do something, he would say he's showing up and never does. And then I'm like, okay, so I put in that the kitchen pipe was messed up and it was Thanksgiving and I had no running water in my kitchen. Like I was running back and forth from the bathtub to the kitchen, washing dishes on Thanksgiving. It was they mentioned how they were charged late fees on rent despite having paid it on time. We had been here for almost a year. I was like, dude, we've been late one time. This is our first time ever. You know what I mean? Because she was all talking about some crazy crap on the email. And I'm like, dude, like, Jace said that fee was waived. I don't understand why I owe 50 for last month, you know? And they explain their reasoning for stopping rent payments here in this clip. So it's like, okay, well, if you're not going to come fix anything, I'm not going to pay my rent. You know what I mean? I was like, um, I didn't know I, I could do that. You know what I mean? Like, not pay rent to see if it'll get over here to do something. So they were protesting the fact that, from their perspective, there had been no effort on Chandler's end to fix any of the broken stuff, which is his responsibility to do, or his property managers, whatever. The problem with all of this is that it is very difficult to focus on what the tenants are saying, because as they say it, the text on the screen directly contradicts them. There's no real way to verify who's telling the truth in this situation. The tenants say one thing, Chandler writes another on the screen, but because of the way he's 
framing these people? To the average viewer, it's not like it really matters, does it? The narrative being pushed here is crystal clear. They're getting booted from the house they can't afford, and they have the audacity to lecture Chandler, our boss baby boy Chan Man, about the success of his business while this happens. Oh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. And when you read the comments, these efforts to paint the tenants as the worst stereotypes imaginable have clearly paid off. Rent to the hood, you get the hood. Pretty confident. For a soon-to-be homeless man, Mouthy Deadbeat thinks he can talk his way out of paying rent. Man who can't pay $1,000 rent telling a millionaire he's got a lot to learn. Always the victim. Professional Deadbeats. Smirk, here's a personal favorite of mine, and people wonder why stereotypes exist. Hey, what did you mean by that, exactly? What do you mean by that? So, everything about this sucks. I was honestly just kind of appalled that the general response in the comments is completely devoid of humanity, and it's all amplified by the way that Chandler crafts this content to mock them. At one point, when the guy is talking about the storm damage, Chandler puts the numbers that he's saying on the screen, but misrepresents what he says as a way to, like, insult his intelligence. It's super dope. If I wasn't struggling with the sweat cause it that mill dude out down there eight hundred dollars worth of clothes now this is thirteen hundred plus eight so let me and ask then, you this no 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 you want to get perspective so the perspective is is we've told your landlord that our broke and we out down there two close to three thousand dollars worth of but don't worry, it gets worse. These TikToks went viral fairly recently. This month, actually, December of 2021. That's when I found them. Or rather, Brian from Discord found them, and he sent them to me. Everybody type, thank you for your service, Brian. He's not in the military, but he's a great Discord mod. But despite these TikToks going viral just last week, this isn't the first time that they've been posted online. He first posted them in December of last year, and he did it again in February of this year, and then again in May. And it turns out, the original encounter actually happened over two years ago, in May of 2019. The full video is on this guy's YouTube channel. It's one of his most viewed videos on there as well. Also, he has more subscribers than me, so what's what's going on there, folks? Seriously, this fucking go goober landlord? Feel free to press the subscription button right now. Press it please, thank you. But that original uncut video is very revealing. It shows how Chandler went into this interview with the intent of provoking this guy. So he just agreed to do an interview. Um, I said kind of for training purposes, so we're gonna set up chairs and just ask him and see how this goes. And then I'm probably gonna get it heated up because I'm gonna go at him a little bit, so. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. How, if necessary, he planned on holding their lack of resources against them as a coercive tool to make them do what he wants for his content. If push comes to shove and they're like, no, we don't want to let you in, I know these people are hurting for money, so I might throw them like 50 or 100 bucks and just say, come on, just let me go now so that we can have this for the video. In his follow-up video, he lies about them stealing electricity. There's a section of the interview where the lady explains how the upstairs neighbors had made a deal with them to pay a fee to use an outlet of their electricity while theirs was shut down, so they could keep their fridge and lights on. But the neighbor upstairs, I said, look, I'll pay half your bill if you let me plug in my fridge and my lights and, you know, and that's what we've been rolling for my with. kids. And he just conveniently leaves this out. They had jimmy-rigged that light to steal electricity from upstairs. So there was some weird setup where they'd yanked it out and ran a cord to try and make it so they'd get their light to work because they hadn't been paying electricity and had been stealing it from upstairs. Which, sure, that works great if you're trying to make these people out to be criminals, but it's also just lying. He heard them say that they had permission. That exchange is literally in the videos he posted. So you've been paying them, it hasn't been stealing. Yeah, no. no, they agreed to it and I was like, I'll pay half your bill. He goes, no, don't worry about it. And we still throw money because that's, how we are, I'm not gonna, you know what I mean? So it's almost like he knows that the people watching won't really care whether it's true or not. Funny how that works. More than anything, I think this full video reveals how all of this is just like a game to him. This property is an investment, one that he manages from afar. And so to him, it's just another number on a balance sheet. And when that number is not making a profit on the loan as it should be, going in to change that is just a fun little field trip, a content adventure for him to degrade the people that he's evicting. It's very mask off. Like normally, landlord 
landlords do this shit, but filming it and slapping on a TikTok sticker that says like and follow for part 34 is pretty fucking demented. At no point is there any moment of reflection like, hey, is what I'm doing right now really shitty? Is me exploiting these people who will likely never have a tenth of the wealth that I do really worth it for the two to four cents per 1,000 views that TikTok's creator fund pays out? By the way, important little footnote, he rents out over 60 apartments. He makes $100,000 a month from doing this. What is your gross revenue? from rental properties. So, um... $95,500 a month. That's <laughs> legit what it is, though. <laughs> That's his gross It's 100K. Revenue. There you go, 100,000 a month. 100 grand. He just got an electric Porsche. Don't test your Tesla. Uh, not really. <laughs> and is building his million dollar dream home. And he makes content out of all this shit. So that is all sitting in his TikTok feed right next to these videos of him making people homeless, which is just awesome. How great is that? It's the best. I definitely don't think Mao was right. Now, it is true that they agreed to do this interview. And yes, they were technically behind on rent. And yeah, they did leave the property a mess. But does any of this make what he's doing here any less shitty? No, especially given the fact that he knew what he was doing when he went in and how he's continually exploited this situation since it first happened over two years ago. But maybe that's just me, okay? Maybe that's just my pronouns having 5G estrogen. I don't like this. I hate this. I hate doing this bit. 5G using Zoomer brained opinion. So take it with a grain of Adderall, okay? I spent a long time talking about that series of videos, and I think that's justified given how bad they were. But fear not, there's more great stuff on this guy's page that I'm going to make you watch now. And you're gonna have to deal with that or click away. I don't care. I'm not the one that lives inside of Noah's computer. That's you guys. He has a video up that aims to address the specific allegations that landlords are parasites. It's a video responding to a comment that reads, Landlords are parasites who live off the income of the actual working class. They offer nothing to society and should not exist. Love that. We stan. We stanley. It's captioned by Chandler with, Landlords suck. Shame on them for providing you with a place to live. Hashtag landlord, hashtag rental, hash blah 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 blah. This should be enjoyable to listen to. Alright guys, this one definitely got me triggered a little bit because what business is there that doesn't live off of the working class? I mean, whether you're going to Wait, wait, pause it. Pause the video. Pause it. He's onto something there. Um, that sounds good so far. Let's hear him out. What business is there that doesn't live off of the working class? I mean, whether you're going to a restaurant or the grocery store, or literally any other business that provides a service that you pay for, that's kind of how it works. On top of that, if you don't like working with a landlord and renting, go buy your own property. Ah! Okay, um, I take it back. You can literally do that. The reason people don't is because a landlord buys it and doesn't require you to come up with a huge down payment to be able to live in their place. How do people think it's supposed to work? Wait, like, they... wait, wait. Okay, so you can't buy the property because the landlord already did because they could afford the quote unquote huge, huge down, down payment. payment and you could not. And this is why we should be thankful to landlords. Am I hallucinating right now? Hey, here's a fun statistic. Did you know that 54 <sighs> percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck that over half of us don't have enough money in our savings to last three months but yeah just go buy a property go buy it take out a loan you know a loan that you can't pay back because I don't know if I mentioned this before but you are living paycheck to paycheck oh wait you can't pay down payments with a loan what am I saying never mind hey rent is due by the way oh and I just raised it because I can oh also I took your security deposit and used it to buy a vinyl cover for my jet ski because there was a gogurt wrapper sticking out of your recycling bin. Also, this is all your fault. How do people think it's supposed to work? Like, do they expect food and shelter and their vehicle and literally anything else that they're going to use in life to just be provided to them? Y yes, that's, yeah. You just described the ideal society. It's not like we don't have the resources or the infrastructure or the technological proficiency to provide those things. Oops, sorry, my communism keeps flaring up. I'll go put on my lotion, be right back. Oh. Okay, God, this communism cream is so creamy. Food and shelter and their vehicle and literally anything else that they're going to use in life to just be provided to them. If so, what's the point of life? Like you just sit around and just have these things that someone else 
provides for you what what do you what do you do i know you didn't just use the phrase sitting around in a derogatory manner as a landlord sitting around is what you do for a living hello but secondly i'm really glad he asked this question if everything was provided what will you do because there is a nice simple answer live you get to live. Imagine, no more stress about the potential of being uprooted from your life each month. You can save money, live better, Papa John's, go read some books, get out into nature, make some art, find hobbies and fulfillment outside of the prison that is the Starbucks or Amazon packing facility or gig economy app of choice that, statistically speaking, you probably work for. When he proposes that everything is handed to you, and this is something you hear a lot, right? Why would you want all this free stuff? Welfare, man bun, avocado, whatever the fuck. This is always proposed by these people as being a bad thing. And the only reason all of that would be bad is if we were operating under the assumption that people, given resources for basic necessities and left to their own devices, will inevitably become a drain on society. Which is just not the case. Because, I mean, if that's how you think people are, then you don't know enough people that aren't landlords. But this idea is also unsupported by the data. That's right, I'm going old school Shapino on your ass. Minus the racism. All of the evidence on the topic points to the contrary, that most cash assistance and welfare programs across the globe actually serve to increase wages and encourage working hours. Whether or not the latter is a good thing is definitely a separate conversation. I'm of the opinion that just because people can work more doesn't necessarily mean that they should, but the fact is that quote unquote handouts work. Bringing people above the poverty line and making sure children are fed, these are good things. Right? Right? The fact that we even have to continue disproving these myths in 2021 is all the more evidence that we need to dig Margaret Thatcher up out of the ground and shoot her into space in the direction of the sun, just on the off chance that it makes her ghost stop f***ing with us. Okay, so there's a follow-up video here responding to another comment. The comment reads, Ah yes, because if a landlord didn't buy the place, it would not exist for someone to live in. Watch how he responds to this. Yeah. <laughs> In this guy's brain, the concept of housing can only exist through the medium of a landlord. For him, landlords may as well be a standard feature of human evolution. The first cave folks they had landlords, did you not know that? Those little fishy guys, they had little fishy landlords. And of course, who can forget the classic bi biblical quote, and on the third day, God said, let there be landlords. He's saying, once again, that you should be thankful that landlords exist. Because if they didn't, houses wouldn't. How do you think they'd get built? It's not the builders or the architects or the engineers or the people that actually do the work. No, it's the fucking landlords. It's Chan sitting in his Gary V den being a freak. If you needed any more indicators that this guy and all landlords are hobgoblins, check out this new type of content that's just dropped. It's a new, brand new genre, my favorite. Raising rent is good, actually content. This one is responding to a comment that reads, there is no reason why rent should be raised every single year. That's called discrimination. I love that from you, Corey Mach 6. Comments like these are so funny to me because this person is just uneducated. Every single year I have to deal with higher taxes, higher insurance, and this fun little thing called inflation where literally everything goes up in value, which means it costs more for everybody. Even if there wasn't higher taxes, higher insurance, higher maintenance, higher, you know, everything due to inflation and a myriad of other things, I would still increase rents every single year if I could get away with it because that would mean that the market demands it. You know, the that market came to my house earlier and asked to fuck my wife. And well, the market gets what the market wants. They made me jerk off in the corner. That would mean that if I raise rents on my tenants and they go to look somewhere else, they're not gonna be able to find a better deal because of supply and demand. So when I see comments like this, I get really frustrated and I don't feel bad for these people at all because I literally teach people how to buy. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 no promo, Chan. So this is truly incredible stuff here. If I raise rents on my tenants and they go to look somewhere else, they're not going to be able to find a better deal. So if they can't afford the rent at your property now that you've raised it, and they also can't afford the rent anywhere else, doesn't that just make them homeless? It does, right? Or am I missing something? Today's market, we don't really find good deals anymore. They don't just sit there on the market like, oh yeah, that's a great deal. Just buy it and you're gonna cash flow. In today's market, you make good deals. And that's one way you do it, by finding properties that are under rent, 
and then bring them up to whatever market is. Did you catch that? Making a property into a good deal means buying it and jacking up the rent. Interesting strategy. Let's see where this goes. A lot of landlords who own properties have not raised rent in many, many years because they just don't want to, they know their tenants. The, the mom and pop landlords, they just, they like their tenant. So they've been keeping it at 450, $500, $600 in rent for a long time. And I'm not saying like overnight, you need to go and jack their rent from 500 to 900 overnight, but there's a process that you go through to get these tenants, like as people move out or you give them notice and you you raise their rent to what a normal rent would be. I'm not saying raise their rent overnight. I'm saying kick them out and then raise it. That way you're not screwing them over. You're getting in ahead of time and securing your portfolio of stocks and bonds. And then it just hard cuts to the last episode of Squid Game. Oh, you see that guy down there? The free market told me to kill him. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. That is so crazy, dude. Holy crap, you're crazy. Yes, this is me making fun of people who watched the English dub. Even though it might not have been your fault, it's still your fault. Now, to be fair, I've been pretty harsh on our boy Chan. He did not create this system. He's just operating within it, trying to build wealth for him and his family. He's not the only person in America who thinks this way. And all the stuff that I said about him can be said about any landlord. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be saying it. We should question why the notion of building wealth for your family is acceptable even when it comes at the expense of other people's basic necessities. In fact, because this for-profit housing system is so broken and inefficient and in need of change, we should never stop talking about people like this. Not until people like this are no longer necessary. Until then though, we're gonna we're gonna name and shame. At least I am. I don't give a shit. I don't have trouble sleeping at night. I take a melatonin, baby. This video is brought to you by melatonin, the drug that kills you for a short period of time every night. Have you ever heard of house hacking? Well, if not, don't worry. Addison Jarman, our second snarky bourgeois creepy crawly of the day, is here to enlighten us. How in the world do you afford rent? I never see you working. Me? Yeah. Well, actually, I own the property, so I pay the $900 mortgage. Wait, you're my landlord? Yeah, it's called house hacking. I make $1,900 off y'all paying rent each month, and so that means I have an extra thousand bucks to use on expenses for the home, as well as extra money for me. So I'm paying you to live here for free. That's right, and then eventually I'll sell the place and make a big profit. If you took every great socialist thinker throughout history, put them in a room, and gave them access to all the money in the CCP's checking account, yes, the Chinese Communist Party has a checking account, it's with Wells Fargo, actually. Don't tell the Federal Reserve. If you put them in a room and said, hey, we need you to make a piece of content that makes the case for the abolition of private property in the modern age, they could not have done better than this video. It's amazing. No offense, everybody. I love y'all. Great work. Thank you. She's posted this same video format like six times, and in one of them, I thought her comments at the top were pretty funny. For everyone sending me death threats, in real life, the roommates would 100% know that the fourth roomie is the owner before moving in. It's on the lease. If you don't want to live with the owner, then don't move in. Zero deception, no surprises. I disavow death threats, of course, but I don't know why she's surprised that the people who watch her video think that's what actually happens. Because it's exactly how she presents it. I guess maybe at Adding a disclaimer about the nature of the agreement would pull focus from her stellar comedy acting. Who taught you how to do this? Addison did. She's making me rich. That's why I follow her. She's making me rich. Making that's me why I follow her. her. But like, come on, that's, that's on you. You literally say, how come you're such a lazy sack of shit, landlord roommate? Always profiting off of us, normal people, and expect us to side with the landlord, huh? She's rich. That's why I follow Nick, her. who is a car, used his little rubber tire paws to write, this is how most apartments work. Except landlords make a profit and their mortgage is paid. Cry a river. That's the real world. And he is absolutely right. He struck the core of the point that I am attempting to make here. What Addison is really depicting in these videos is just a landlord. All landlords do this exact same thing. But instead of using your money to live with you for free and rub it in your face, they use your money to save up and buy more properties so that they can do this to more people. What has everyone so upset is the transparency. Just like the videos we looked at before, with this video she's managed to peel back the curtain and expose just how parasitic the role of the landlord is. Like look at these comments. This should be illegal. This is why renters can't afford their own homes because they're busy paying off someone else's. Nah, that's pure evil. I wouldn't be able to make someone pay that much without a sense of heavy guilt. Mao, bro, please come back. There's a good exchange here with these comments. 
comments. This is the problem with society. Everyone wants to freeload, but no one wants to contribute. Don't do this if you actually like your roommate. Addison responds, the owner put $40,000 of their own money down, holds all the risk, and is responsible for everything. They aren't freeloading. And she's right about one thing here. In order to be able to do this, you need $40,000 cash. If you don't have that, then, well, sorry. You are the one renting in this scenario. If you do, and you decide to do this with that money, then yes, you are freeloading. You're freeloading in the sense that you're making money off of other people who have less resources than you for doing nothing. You can sit around while your roommates work to pay your mortgage and don't receive any of the long-term benefits. I sincerely hope that she and everybody else making these keeps doing it. Because the more people realize that this is what the real world is, the more people might want to try changing it, or at least be open to alternative solutions. Being able to identify something that you might have previously viewed as the norm and say, that is not how things should be. We can do better than this, and we can. And I have developed a fully comprehensive plan on how to do this. And if you go to my Patreon, that's where it is. It's there on that on that website behind a paywall. Ah, uh, this is fun. We're having fun, aren't we? This is a lot of, this is a blast. In America, we do this thing where we forget that there are places that exist outside of America and that these places can have different systems that might work better than what we have. Wow, that's so crazy, man. That's so deep. And the system of commodified private land ownership that we have here is a uniquely egregious example of that. Like, look at socialized housing in Vienna, for example. It's fucking amazing. It's efficient, well-designed, and it gives these people and families real stability because it's affordable, even disregarding the tremendous aid that's available, the average rent cost is between $400 and $600 a month in Vienna. Look at this. These folks are just simply vibing. Or look at what Singapore has done. It has one of the highest home ownership rates in the world, and the vast majority of these homes are government-built flats. They began offering heavy subsidies on housing in the 60s, and it worked. That moment when the government does some stuff. To be fair to the US government though, you know, I get it. This stuff is not cheap. Somebody's gotta pay for it. And we do still have to finish the Death Star that we're working on, and those Spartan lasers, and cancel free lunches so we can subsidize Uber. So I guess this stuff will have to wait just for a little while. And that's okay, because in the meantime, we have some new TikTok landlord content to consume and learn how to maximize our passive income cash flow by proxy murdering poor people. Disappear for six months, work out every day, grind your way to the top of a human trafficking ring, and watch as your ex-girlfriend will finally DM you back. And that's when you block her. But first you read the message and it says, hey, please leave me alone. You're being a freak and a creep. Stop messaging me. Thanks. Okay, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Shout out to Kelgore and Tiffany Ferguson. They both have great videos on this topic, which I've linked in the description. Go check those out. Thanks again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Link in my bio for that. It's the best consumer service in the world. Many people are saying this. Uh, make sure to do your best to keep your organs in your body. Until I see you next time. And yeah, say bye. Bye, everybody.